from the studio at FC Public Media, it's FOCO Underground Comedy Edition. This week featuring Derek Stroop. Also featuring John Wilkins. All right, all right. Thank you guys so much for showing up to Fort Collins Foco Comedy Underground. Give a big round of applause for you guys for showing up. You guys are amazing. You're beautiful. This is uh, Foco Comedy Underground brought to you in part by Fort Collins Public Media and 970 Comedy. We have an amazing lineup for you. Uh, initially, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you guys some jokes. Uh, this is a suggested donation show only, so if you like what you see, throw some money in the bucket, and we would really appreciate it. So like I said, I'm going to give you some jokes up front, and then I'm going to bring up uh, your next comedian. So uh, I'm recently single. I'm recently single. Um, actually, that's not entirely true. I've been single for a super long time, uh, roughly 34 years. <laughs> recently single for 34 years. That's how I'm rolling, baby. That's how it goes. Uh, I've been single for so long, I like to call it aggressively single, which sounds aggressive, I know, but it's really not. It's just me being single up here wearing this jacket. Like, that's aggressively <laughs> single. Like, that's d defined as that. So, uh, ladies, I'm a triple threat. Yeah, so watch out. I'm uh, aggressively single, I'm delusional, and I'm bad at sex. <laughs> so I'm a triple threat. That's right. I'm super delusional. I'm super delusional. When I started comedy, I thought it would be a real panty dropper. But it turns out it's more of a dehumidifier. <laughs> That's right. The other day, my friend called me up. They're like, Jacob, uh, our sub pop broke in our basement. Can you do comedy down there? <laughs> And I was like, absolutely, absolutely, I'll do comedy down there. I'll do comedy anywhere. You know that. You know that. But that's right. I'm also really bad at sex, which has been fun. It's, uh, it's really not for lack of trying. It's more for lack of practice. So, uh, ladies, this is kind of on you. <laughs> so, uh, but when I do bring home a female, I'm like a kid in a candy store, right? Like I'm licking everything and I'm grabbing everything. It's like an A for effort, but like a D for execution. <laughs> But like a solid D, like a solid white guy D, just uh, <laughs> across the board. In fact, I'm actually so bad at sex that in college, some girls wouldn't count it. Which to me was just weird. I mean, they gave me the nickname Mulligan, which I thought honestly uh, was because I hated golf, but it turns out for, it's for a much meaner reason. <laughs> it's just a real mean reason. No, it's, uh, it's good. But I am uh, seeing a girl right now. I don't really like labels because it would ruin this joke. So uh, I really, uh, uh, she claims that I come too quickly. And, uh, you know, I'm like, listen, it's all in the perspective, right? It's like, I don't come too quickly. I have sex efficiently, okay? I'm in, I'm out, I'm asleep. Efficient sex, you know how it goes. In fact, lady, because she likes it when I objectify her, I'm like, listen, lady, um, you should consider yourself lucky because uh, having sex with me is like having sex with a wizard, right? I don't come too early, I don't come too late, I come precisely when I intend to. Wizard sex, all right. And I'm wearing a wizard gown, like I really like to play on <laughs> the wizard aspect of it. Okay, you guys seem about warmed up as you're gonna get with me, this is really great. Uh, definitely feel free to laugh uh, for all the other comedians because they're super funny. Uh, this next comic coming up, is uh, who runs a show every Thursday at Sushi High. Please give a big round of applause for Mr. John Wilkins. Well, hello, hi, how are you? Good to be here. So uh, I'm a little rattled. When I was uh, driving up here, I got pulled over by a police officer. And when he came up to the car, he said I was swerving in and out of the bus lane a little bit. He asked me if I was texting. I was like, actually, sir, I was sexting. I was... Uh, he said I was driving erratically. I was like, well, actually, I was driving erotically. That's, uh, <laughs> that's exactly what I was doing, and he should be here soon, because he said, thanks for the number. And uh, <laughs> it's pretty cool. But uh, Fort Collins is nice. I was down in Denver today, very nice day. It was like 60 degrees. I was walking around on Capitol Hill, and I saw a hipster couple with a kid wearing a hat. It was fedorable. It was absolutely... <laughs> Fedorable, and it changed my life a little bit. Then I walked around the corner, and I saw these two guys, and they looked like they were making out, and I must have, I don't know, disrupted them. They looked at me all scared, and they claimed they were beard fighting. Like, I, 
Didn't know that was a thing, beard fighting. But uh, I was with my lesbian friend at the time, and now she calls scissoring hipster kissing. So that's cool. We're, we're coining new phrases. That's what's happening. But a uh, little about me. I'm uh, in my divorties. That's, uh, that's right. I'm in my 40s and divorced, and it's a tough time of my life. When I first got divorced, though, I was doing some dating. I'm uh, very Jewish, and I dated my first Mexican girl. Parents very not happy, but uh, she was a very sweet girl. One night, she called me up, middle of the night, and she said, I want you to come over. And I was like, when? And she said, Aura. And I was like, how about an hour and a half? Like, I got to take a shower, right? <laughs> and then she was like, I was like, how am I going to get in? And she said, aqui? And I was like, yeah, under the mat? And <laughs> I haven't heard from her since. So that obviously isn't working out. But, uh, you know, uh, let's get into some statistics here. You look like a smart crowd. Do you guys know that 90% uh, of all ex-adult stars <coughs> suffer from some sort of PTSD day? So, you know, that's a thing. They do. They get hit in the face a lot. They do. Nuts right in their face. It's, it's a, they're across the bear, I guess. But, uh, yeah. So I, um, I do voiceover work. That's a lot of fun. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the FarmersOnly.com group, but uh, I was in one of those commercials. It was a lot of fun. You think, what, I was a actor maybe or a, a, a date? or I, I was a horse. That's what I was. I was... I was a horse, and that's because I have a big nose. And apparently, that's what a horse sounds like when he sings, a guy with a big nose. Like, I, I know I got a big nose. I know that because nobody's ever offered me cocaine. Like, that's uh, <laughs> never, ever happened to me. But uh, I don't know, one day. I figure if I go first, nobody else at that party is having a good time. So <laughs> that's why that's not happening. But I don't know. Other, other things. Here's a real cop story. This was actually, this happened a few weeks ago. I got, uh, I got pulled over by a police officer, and uh, she lumbered up to the car after she pulled me over, a real handsome lady, and uh, she asked me if I knew why I was pulled over. I said I had no idea, and she said I made an illegal lane change. And I was like, but that guy, he waved me in. And she said, you didn't use your signal. And I was like, Ugh, why don't you just pull your gun out of your holster and shoot me, right? <laughs> And uh, she told me not to be crabby, right? I was being crabby. I'm like, look, I'm having a bad day. I got pulled over by a police officer, obviously. And she said, we're having a bad day too. We lost an officer this morning. I hope you find him, obviously. <laughs> Wasn't the right response, I guess. I don't know. But uh, So last week I was in court for my faulty, <laughs> for my lane change, right? They said, like... They knocked it down to a faulty headlamp, right? Because that's what they do. They, they do that. And uh, I thought, that's pretty cool. I was waiting there afterwards just to see. I didn't have much else to do, so I need to write some material. I was waiting and watching. I saw that the guy after me stole a $100,000 car out of this guy's driveway. Pretty nice car. And uh, he got Grand Theft Auto knocked down to baby snatching, right? <laughs> I didn't even know that was a thing. But, uh, and it's worse, I think. The lady after him, this lady was great. She got divorced. She was very upset with her husband. Snuck up into his bedroom in the middle of the night, cut his balls off. She got attempted murder, knocked down to jewel theft. Right? right. <laughs> oh. And we're dating. We are. We are dating now. That's. Uh, um, before I go, just to uh, leave you with something to worry about, I guess. Tax season. It's uh, upon us. I don't know how you guys are doing with your taxes, but today I went and saw my accountant. My accountant told me that something was a gray area. I was like, I don't, they always say that. What's a gray area? I was thinking to myself later though, what's the biggest gray area I've ever seen? And uh, then I was surfing some internet porn a little earlier today. Came upon one of those granny sites. This lady had a par five, like seriously? <laughs> It was by far the biggest gray area I've ever seen. It was my closer. Thank you. You guys have been great. John Wilkins, everybody. All right, we've reached our headliner. This man hails all the way from Alabama. Please give a big round of applause for my good friend, Mr. Derek Stroop. Y'all doing okay? 
Everybody makes it sound like that. I live in Denver. Everybody makes it sound like I just got here horseback or something. <laughs> it's a big show for this guy tonight. It was like the Oregon Trail, but different. He made it. Uh, his, he tied up out front. I am from Alabama. Um, I live in Denver now, and we're going to get to that in a minute. Um, my name's actually what's going to be important in the beginning of this conversation. Uh, my name is Derek Stroop. Um, I'm 33 years old. I don't have any kids. Sometimes I drink a little Bud Light and smoke a little bit, and I wonder, you know what, what would I name them? You know, I'd have to label these guys if I slipped up and had one, you know. <laughs> and the other day I saw an inf a, a, uh, insurance commercial, and there was a guy on there named Campbell. It's like, man, I like the name Campbell. You know, he sounds like a good neighbor. Maybe one day, if I do it right, middle linebacker, I don't know. <laughs> I was like, what if I name my kid Campbell Stroop, you know? I don't know if y'all catch on to that, but that's not going to work, okay? I mean, y'all stared at me like y'all know a couple Progresso Johnsons out there making a difference in the world. No, Campbell Stroop would do good, man. I think, I think you know, that'll be a good name, especially with how upside down the world. No, y'all ever heard the song A Boy Named Sue? I'm going to teach this son of a gun how to fight. That's what I'm going to have to teach him how to do. But uh, the, 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 immediately I thought of my mom. We're good friends. We're close in age and in real life. Um, she went to Panama City when she was 17, came back with me and a spray-painted T-shirt. So anyways, I called old Stacy up, and I was like, Stace Face, you're going to love this. How funny would it be if I named my kid Campbell Stroop, you know? And immediately she's at work in her cubicle, and she loves it. She's got her little tubicle, I mean, uh, Tupperware cubicle partner, Christy, there. And they're just white woman he hawing it up. I mean, back of sprout snorting, you know? And I'm like, listen, you got to reel it in. It's not that funny, you know? She was like, Derek, actually, there's some truth to that. You know, because if that kid is anything like you growing up, he'd be a lot more like Chunky Campbell Stroop, you know? <laughs> and, and that is kind of cute. That pissed me off. I'm going to be honest with you. I mean, this is the same lady. She's a saint, you know? She's an accountant type of lady. You spill a margarita on her, and uh, she blacks out and pees on herself. <laughs> I mean, I, I, when I was a kid, she, uh, I, I came home one day, and I was telling her everybody in school was calling me fat. And she was like, you know, why is that? I was like, well, I got husky jeans. You know, you keep buying me these husky jeans. And she got down on one knee, and she looked right at me, and she was like, those jeans aren't for fat kids. They're for warmer weather, okay? That's what husky stands for. And, I mean, what type of saint does it take to lie? I mean, next day I went skipping to school, handful of Dunkaroos, not a care in the world. I mean, that's what type of special woman she normally is. <laughs> How'd I get into comedy? Thanks for asking, table up front. Everybody wants to know. It looks like I won a raffle at a freaking Elks Lodge, but that's not true. Um, first job at, well, listen, I'll be honest with you. Two DUIs in six months will put you on an open mic list and a bicycle, okay? That's a fact, if y'all want to know how it really happens. And, and before we get into that, I, I got to tell y'all, this was almost a decade ago, but I wish I would have got my DUIs out here. I really do. Back home, as soon as we get on a bicycle, everybody knows that we don't have our driver's license anymore, you know? I mean, I'm telling you, y'all ever rode a bicycle on a gravel road? It's pretty discouraging. I don't know if y'all have ever tried it. And it's not that in the South, listen, and, and, and we like riding bikes, and we'd like to go on a hike, but it's too hot. I mean, we should go to check our mail, and we get swamp ass, you know? I mean, if it was 67 degrees with a light breeze and zero humidity, sure, we'd do that 14er with a Nalgene bottle. We'd love to. But it just doesn't work that way. We just look out our window and watch the heat rise off the concrete. It's too hot to do anything. like. I mean, there's people in Boulder in the middle of July. It can be 100 degrees. It doesn't matter. They got corduroy pants on, riding bikes to meet up, talk about new flavors of lattes. All right? I could have fooled everybody here. I could have been like, listen, you know, I thought about getting a Prius, but I went with a bicycle. I got a yoga mat, adopted a dog. I'm doing all kinds of Colorado stuff. You need to back off. Don't worry about my driver's license. But uh, the first job I ever had in my entire life led me to comedy, I'd like to believe. I uh, worked at a Baby's R Us. I was 16 years old. My dad said I had to get a job, so I put in a bunch of job applications. And, of course, the place with breast pumps and Similac hit me back. And, uh, they, uh, you know, I could have been, you know, they put me in the stroller section. I live a different life, I feel like, you know. But 16 years old, they put me in the breast pump section, you know. Why the breast pump section? I mean, I started off with a little acne on my chin. Two weeks later, it looked like an actual pipe bomb had gone off in my face. <laughs> Just had a bedroom littered with Stridex pads, you know? Had women named Samantha coming up to me. I've got sensitive nipples. This says it takes four packs of batteries. I look like the cowardly lion trying to respond. <laughs> All you need is a pump. All you need is a pump. <laughs> That's why I started wearing four pairs of underwear to work. <laughs> Couldn't hang their jacket off the front of my pants anymore after that, huh? <laughs> That's true. Listen, 
I, I tell you, I mean, 16, there's no time in, in a man's life where hormones are running through you more than 16. And for some reason, we get our driver's license at the same time. So it's like, hey, I've got a hard on and I'm hitting the highway. I don't, I don't get that. But, but the first thing I want to get to is, I mean, in that point in your life, you're, I mean, I'm in history class getting hard ons for no reason, you know? Doesn't matter what anybody, Harriet Tubman can't keep it down, you know? <laughs> So, I mean, it's just babies are us in the breast pump section. That's just too much to handle. Listen, and don't let me lose you on this. Everybody likes to back off of this whole, man, he's talked about being 16 and having a heart on for three minutes. Well, you better hang tight, all right? <laughs> I've got one more thing we've got to talk about. What about when you're upstairs making out with Michelle? Everything's going good. Youth group's on fire. Supper's almost ready. You hear Mr. Steve coming. You better put that thing away. Now you got to put your dick against your belly button, throw your shirt over it. Abracadabra, Mr. Steve, we have no more pecker, okay? <laughs> That's the time in your life when the flip-up's more important than ever. I mean, we're in here paying our mortgage now. We walk around with them. We don't have to hide them as much. I get it. That's just the truth, you know. But I want to talk about, y'all mind if I take a sip of this coffee? I don't talk fast enough. I'm going to speed it up. I need to, I need to speed it up. Y'all are like looking at me like, wow, Gomer. I mean, you know, you're talking like you got a mouthful of peanut butter. You get different versions of Southern people. Some people will talk so long, it's like, listen, I really, I really don't care how good your high school football team was. I'll find my own directions like I'm out. And then you got people like me that sounds like I'm trying to auction off some engine I can't get rid of. Well, if you come over here, I mean, I talk like that guy, you know, a little Louisiana on you. I'm actually from a little town in North Alabama called Harvest. Um, it's a little town that I'm trying to put on the map. I care about it a lot, mainly because every tornado is trying to take us off, y'all. <laughs> We don't even live above ground there anymore. We're like a bunch of redneck moles. Yeah, yeah. We, you pull up, there's a driveway that leads to a white picket fence that goes to a storm shelter. Around September, we stick our heads out. Is it almost time for the tide to roll? <laughs> I said, hold on, everybody. I said, is it almost time for SEC football? <laughs> My God, man. Boy, do I hate Bama football. You guys have no clue. <laughs> My God, the only people that talk about titles, they talk about titles, every conversation, and they've got none to their vehicles, you know, and I just, I can't deal with that, yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm out on that, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm going to be your tour guide for the South, I'm going to talk about it the whole time I'm up here, and it just takes one Google search to find out that you guys uh, were, you know, not a big tourist spot, um, so I just kind of tell people, I'm not going to let you watch Forrest Gump and be like, oh no, Derek, we got it, thanks buddy, good movie, have a good life, that's not how... That's not how this is. I mean, because I mean, out here, it's not like people have the van. You know, we've got the van packed up and you're like, you know what, Cindy, that pamphlet to the Grand Canyon looks great. But I say we go to Birmingham, Alabama, look at some storm damage and eat some barbecue. You know, <laughs> I don't think that's happening. I want them. No, listen, Cindy, don't talk back to me right now. We're going to go take we're going to take them down there and they need to see a two story McDonald's before they die. <laughs> Some pretty goofy stuff. I do love living in Colorado. I really do. Um, it's a different world, as you guys might imagine. You know, that's not something that's hard to sell you guys on, I know. Uh, took my first flight out here when I was 30 a couple years ago. First flight I ever took dropped me off in this city, and boy, started a little buzz on the back of that Frontier flight, letting them know that was my first one. I mean, <laughs> boy, they, they, boy, they, they kind of treated me like I had a touch of downs there for a minute. Everybody was giving me free peanuts, patting me on the head. It's his first flight. Yeah, he's a grown man, but it's his first time in the air. He's the first, can, when we land, can we get help? It's, it's from Alabama. Doesn't have cable. Yes, we need everybody. <laughs> The coolest thing about living in Colorado, besides, I mean, listen, the not sweating part's cool, and I like all the trail mix and hiking. That shit's fun. And the green chili, I put it on everything besides my Frosted Flakes. But listen, <laughs> it, it, it's got, I mean, buying pot is cool on this side of the hill, all right? I've got to tell you, because if you've lived on the other side and you've been an outlaw, all right, it's so fun to buy it here, all right? I go into some place that's like an, an Apple store for cannabis. Are you following me? Some guy walks up named Joseph. He has a name tag on. How would you like to experience your cannabis today, Mr. Stroop? What do you mean? <laughs> Standing up, eating Ben and Jerry's? I don't know what you're asking me, man. <laughs> oh, well, we have different strands of pot here, according to how you feel physically or emotionally. Mr. Stroop, we can help you out. <laughs> All right, Joseph, well, if you're not lying to me, I'm going to shoot you straight, buddy. I'm dodging a power bill and dating a psychopath. All right? <laughs> she yells all the time, and they call twice a day, and I need you more than you know. Then they take you to some other counter, and they're like, well, this is the Snoop Dogg counter. You mix this stuff with some local IPA, buy some candles, and I think you won't need her anymore, you know? 
And that's not even the best part of the whole transaction. You know, you go up to the counter, they treat me better than any Kroger's or dentist I've ever been to in my life. They've got to scan my little thing that's on my keychain because I'm one ounce away from getting 10 cents off my next gallon. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Sliding me lighter, stickers, patting me on my head. I have never had treatment this nice in my life. I'm telling you, I go to Cracker Barrel twice a week. Gift shop doesn't talk to me like these people do. <laughs> and that's not the end of it. I'm getting, I'm getting snow day emails in case I forgot about pot in Colorado when there's <laughs> leaf plants painted on every side sidewalk in the country and I can't pass a guy that has a scarf and gym shorts on. I know there's pot here, okay? But instead they're going to send me an email, snow day email, 50% off of all pot because we've got flurries. I'm never going to make it here if they keep sending me these emails. I mean, it has to be something similar to like Seattle. If they had a pot program, rainy day emails, we're all going to die, okay? It's already very affordable. Have you been to the other side? I know some of you people in here may have never bought pot in your life, but my God, you're getting a big lots deal on this side of the mountain. Let me tell you, it's all on clearance compared to Kansas, all right? <laughs> and then, you know, I mean, people here, they're like, I didn't move here for pot, okay? Most of those people are sleeping downtown. I moved here for comedy, okay? I was glad about the pot situation. So I've, you know, partaken in some of that. But here's the thing, is, is everybody here forgets about what it's like on the other side when we're driving around this apartment complex we've never been to. You know, Eagle Point, looking for A13. Does this apartment really even exist? Now I've circled it 10 times. I'm feeling suspicious. The security guard sitting in the Tacoma is staring at me. Now I've found the apartment. You go up, you open the door. My goodness, there's six guys playing Xbox. Smells like Hamburger Helper. Hello, everybody. My name's Derek. How you doing tonight? Trevor's in the back, he's got his eighth, he's all out of bags, puts it in your hand directly. Now I'm holding pot in my hand in the state of Alabama. I've got to make it across a Piggly Wiggly parking lot without getting the dang of electric chair. <laughs> you see how the experience is a little different on the other side? Here, they put it inside of a bag, inside of another bag, inside of this thing they screw on the top, they make fake conversation because they got to put so many labels on the outside of it, inside of a Russian doll, inside of a Russian doll, inside of a box, and then you're out the door. <laughs> Small studio to totally lose your shit in, isn't it? <laughs> Thank you. That's an applause break in the business. <sighs> Living downtown's fun, though. I'm going to try to pretend like I'm catching my breath. <laughs> or not catching my breath. It's tough to fake, I tell you. <laughs> Been here for three years. I swear it's the altitude. My girlfriend tells me it's Waffle House. It's a fight we get in. <laughs> I do love Waffle House. I, uh... Live downtown. I live about seven blocks from Coors Field. It's pretty cool. A uh, couple adjustments to make. Main one: um, haven't seen one stray dog. Seen a thousand stray people. Okay. <laughs> Blows my mind. It's the only place I've ever been where there's a guy sitting on the corner wishing to God he was a corgi. Okay. <laughs> it's like, man, I would be off of this corner. I would be inside. I would have a reflective vest. My name would be Alfred. Um, I'd be eating organic milk bones from Sprouts. You know. I'm just saying, if there was a dog walking through uh, Park Avenue without a collar on, there'd be nine white girls in yoga pants chasing that dog. Stop him! We want to name him Recycle! <laughs> it's just the truth. Sometimes I tell that joke in Denver, they're like, what's he trying to say? I can't keep up. Is he trying to be mean? No. <laughs> just because I have Wranglers on and boots doesn't mean you're losing my point. What I'm saying is I've seen people step over a grown man to pip up, pick up a lost pup, and it confused a good old boy like me. So there's your joke. I got to break that down because some people look at me like, I don't know what he said, but I feel like he pissed me off. <laughs> I knew he was a Republican Trump. Sit him here. This is a trap. All the doors are locked. <laughs> God damn it. Here comes the baptisms. Everybody get in the line. I knew that too. He looked like a Texas youth pastor on the loose. <laughs> Wrong guy. I was raised on Marlboro's and HBO. Tonight's going to be a little different. Okay? <laughs> the, the main thing I've had to get used to downtown um, is picking up dog shit be honest with you. I know Fort Collins is nice. Y'all looked at me like, we ain't picking up any dog shit out here. <laughs> I remember those days. My dad used it as fertilizer. Let him shit there again. My tomatoes were so big, I had to make salsa in a barrel, Derek. <laughs> you know where I'm from? He's like, let him do that. That stuff's hotter than chicken shit, Derek. I didn't know it'd be like, that's a good dog you got. <laughs> yeah, don't step in it. Hell, you get it on your feet. You get inside your mama, lose your mind. Spray your boots off, dumbass. <laughs> it's not how it plays in Denver. I can tell you that. It's a big deal. As soon as that dog poops, you better pick it up. You might get tased. <laughs> And if you got like a small little dog, like a little poodle, and their poopsies don't count, you can go ahead and check out. I'm not talking to you freaks, all right? <laughs> I'm talking about 6 o'clock in the morning, and you got a lab who takes a shit the same size that you're going to take that you haven't been able to take yet, and you got to pick it up with a bag that barely goes over your hand that you can see through. 
Got to go down twice to pick up this shit that goes halfway up my boot. I'm so mad. This guy's shit. I'm eating firehouse subs for lunch. He's eating dry whatever I give him. And he's got the same size turds. What, what is going on in there? I mean, it's mind-blowing. And the bags we use, I can't wait. I'll probably be dead by the time we come up with a bag that's the right size to pick up a mound of shit. And if you look like me and you live, I live in Rhino. It's the most hipster part of town. Everybody thinks I'm a tow truck driver that can't find my car. I walk around. They're like, hey, whoa, 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 30 more minutes, 30 more minutes. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Don't tow, I, what do you mean, man? Everybody thinks I just, the fucking stock show left and I didn't. You know, I'm just like walking around like, yo, is, the, is tonight the bull night? I got half off. I can't find the arena anywhere. I keep bumping into coffee shops and mechanic shops that are now wheat shops. Back to my point, picking up dog shit. When you look like me and your dog shits, every blind on the block opens up like, hillbilly, you better pick it up. They think I'm the one leaving it out there and it's not me, I'm obeying the law, okay? I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. It's just sometimes your dog surprises you. You know, you're not prepared. The other day, me and my dog, seems like a normal day to take a shit, it takes one shit, I bring one bag because that's what we do every fucking day of our life. And then I go over to the tube because I see him, we're doing this again. We've got another one coming, you know? We've already done the fiddler move, but he's doing it again, you know? So I'm like, okay, we gotta go to the tube. I can't believe you're doing this again. So I go over there, no two, no, no bags in the, in the thing because nobody in my, I guess nobody has any extra sprout bags in my side of town. So anyways, I go back over there and at my luck, these aren't, you know, obviously he hasn't been eating his greens because we've got soft serve ice cream. We've got straight diarrhea, guys. You guys ever tried picking up diarrhea with a bag? You haven't. You haven't because you'd have killed yourself. It's the most discouraging thing in the entire world. There's nothing worse. You just look at it. It looks like you looks like you have a bird's view of a Florida swamp is what it looks like. And you know what? You got to fake it because everybody in the block's looking. That lady doesn't work anymore. She's retired. And she watches people pick up shit for a living. And so now you got to fake it. You get down there and you're just grabbing grass because there's no way. Did you bring a spoon? No! <laughs> Nobody has a spoon! So you're down there and you're grabbing grass and you walk over and you're a freaking fraud. You're a fake. All you've got is freaking Bermuda Denver grass right here. And you throw it in the trash can. Somebody goes out there with their freaking volleyball luncheon, steps in it with their TVs. You just ruin their whole month. Anyways, that was my poem about dog shit. <laughs> it's a little edgy. Uh... But yeah, it's fun picking up dog shit, let me tell you. <laughs> don't ever do that joke in Greeley. Boy, they definitely don't pick up dog shit there. I was in the middle of laying into them about that, and they were all looking at me like, this dumbass picking up dog shit. You smell it here? <laughs> Hadn't picked it up in years. All right, I got another story. I'm going to do what I should have done in college. I'm going to wrap it up here. <laughs> You didn't get that joke. I wasn't seasonal at J.C. Penney, okay? <laughs> I, uh, favorite part about living downtown, we're about to get real wild. Am I out of the camera view again? Here, I'm back again. Sorry, I'm all over the place. I'm a psycho up here. Uh, I'm about to lose my mind on y'all, and I got to tell you why. Taco trucks are my favorite thing, okay? I'm from the middle of nowhere. I'm used to, we catch a little buzz. We decide we want Taco Bell. It turns into quite the journey, you know. <laughs> it's seven and a half miles from our doorstep. We need to pack an extra pillow. Text mom and tell her we'll be back in a little bit. <laughs> now I can just be walking down Larimer and I got a buzz and I can be daydreaming about tacos and some guy pulls up, bing, bing, hey! And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. The power of prayer is real, S.A. <laughs> it is real. I was doing either Chick-fil-A or Sunday or you and, man, look at you right here on Larimer. A real hero you are. Anyways, that happened to me. I saw a taco truck the other day. Had a flat tire and the menu was in crayon. I was like, this is it. This is for me. I don't, got, I don't know if you guys know this, but in the South, the, the you know, more garbage that the barbecue joint is, the better the food. Like if you see a porta potty billowing smoke, pull in and order the full slab, okay? <laughs> I mean, it's like that, you know? So I walked up and when I got to this taco truck, the first thing I noticed is that on the left side of the window, there was a big bottle of green sauce, okay? Green, green hot sauce maybe. It said, four pussies. I thought, well, that's kind of rude, you know? <laughs> Other side of the window, there's a big bottle of red sauce. It says, not for pussies. 
And I don't know if y'all have ever worn jeans that Brent Favre does commercials for, but, man, I felt some heat. You know, I was like, woo, somebody's going to get their ass whipped out here, you know. <laughs> I've never been confronted by salsa before, but, hell, I ain't your man. I'm going to go ahead and tell y'all, you know. And as I was trying to figure out, you know, which one I was going to go to, a young lady came up, and she grabbed that tough guy sauce, she poured it all over a burrito. And I'm the type of person, you know, I don't go off the high dive first, but give me one person that I know, do it, I'm in, you know. <laughs> and I was like, that's all I needed, you know. So I went over there, and I poured this hot sauce all over this burrito. You could barely see it. I go home, it's like 11.30 at night, you know, it's good taco truck time. If you ever see somebody at a taco truck during daylight hours, just call the police and pull off, they'll cover that warrant. That person's a killer, okay? <laughs> it, it, taco trucks are for late night, okay, not in the afternoon. It's when the pedophiles eat tacos. Y'all got to <laughs> call the law on them. But anyways, it's 11.30 at night, so I'm, you know, sneaking into the apartment. Not because my girlfriend's a light sleeper. It's just she loses her mind when I eat dinner twice. I mean, just has a talking to me. I think it's because one time she found my, je my jeans on the ground. She was like, Derek, did we buy a denim comforter? And I was like, Beth, that's enough of that. I can go ahead and tell you that. And don't you sass me like that, all right? So anyway, so now I sneak my second dinner. And uh, so I'm getting down there. And, you know, you guys have been in this position where the dinner is such a big deal. You're just totally committed to this thing. It was my last stop of the night. I've taken my pants off. I want, you know, what's on TV to match the meal. I'm not doing a sham wow infomercial. I'm going to do something like a documentary about how we need to recycle more, something I can really indulge in with this burrito. And so, you know, I get posted up in there, and I get a cup of water, and I'm like, boy, I'm fitting to really hurt this thing, you know. And I take a big bite of this burrito, and what happened to me has happened to everybody in this room. I don't even know y'all, but I know it has, okay? My face caught on fire, all right? <laughs> Just like on flames, you know, I was like, wow, it's never happened. I might need, like, actual help. Like, my, my, I can see the flames coming off my lips. And I went into the kitchen, and I grabbed some water. Public schools in the South are not strong, okay? I don't have to tell y'all. Water doesn't do anything to hot salsa in your mouth, okay? It does nothing. It makes salsa and water in your mouth, which is kind of a crazy feeling. But uh, then after that, I went to some milk. I grabbed a gallon of milk out of there, stuck my head over the sink, and just kind of just poured it down the side of my face. And immediately put out that fire in my mouth, you know? And actually, I was able to go back in there and recover. I got a rocky souvenir cup like this big it filled it up with milk i mean you could soak a bad ankle in this sum of gun and i took that back in there because we've all been here we've all over committed to hot sauce whether you know it's a little texas pete on your bagel bites or what it may be you know i got bumped in a corner i wasn't out of the race you know so i went back in there and i sat down and i finished the rest of that burrito thanks to that milk and i went back into the kitchen and i was you know tidying up cleaning up wiping down everything just so when Beth woke up, she didn't, you know, lose her shit over, like, you know, just one shred of cheddar cheese, which has cost me an entire case in our house before. Um, so, you know, I'm really wiping it down, and, and I hit the lights in there because it's time to go to bed, you know. And I did something that we've all done before. Uh, you know, you either scratch your ass or you scratch your balls, you know, just something on your way up the stairs. And I touched my ass uh, with the same <laughs> hand I was eating that burrito with. And I want to tell y'all something about the hot sauce where I'm from. It's vinegar-based. But uh, out here on the western slope, it's a pepper-based sauce. So it got in my oil glands in my hands. And when I touched my butthole, I started a real-life brush fire. Like, immediately, I start, I, as soon as I touched I thought, I've got fire ants on my butt. And I started going, jimmy, 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 jimmy. And I went in directly into the kitchen. The first thing I grabbed was napkins. And I went down there, and napkins didn't do anything. So I took the napkins, and I put them under the sink. And I took my, my underwear completely off, and I squatted down. And I can't, and it's like a magic trick. I don't know what happens to wet toilet tree in there, but you can't find it. I use a loofah. I still have not found that toilet paper down in there. I was like, Derek, you have not been in this much trouble, buddy. You're in, you're in more trouble than you've been in a long time. You can't touch your toes. You got to get some 10% get some on your butthole, and you got to do it now, you know? And I had the best idea I've ever had in my life. I was like, all right, I need to put my left leg behind my head. I need to get my right leg. And I was like, that's not going to work. I need an ice cube. I need an ice cube is what I need. So I went over to that freezer, and I grabbed one of those ice cubes out of there. And the thought I had was so interesting. I thought of the Christmas story when the kid licks the pole and his tongue gets stuck. Man, I did not want that to happen with this ice cube. I was like, I couldn't imagine trying to get Beth down here to pull this thing off of here. No, baby girl, you got to spit on it, then pull it off. You know, it was a bad thing. So I, I get my legs wide open, and I take that ice cube, and I stick it directly on my asshole. And y'all, it sounded like fajitas from Chili's. I mean, immediately. I mean, hot, don't touch, don't touch, hot plate. I mean, immediately. Shh, turned into water. I had a puddle of water in my hand. Just the ice cube was gone. I was like, I need another ice cube. I need another ice cube. I need one now. And I grabbed it, and I got down there, and I had my legs as wide open as I could get them. And I thought, just push it all the way in, Derek. It's not a hamster. It'll just go away. It's just water, frozen water. And about that time, my girlfriend walks downstairs. I don't know if y'all have ever been in this position before. She's got a job at Big Lots, and you got an ice cube in your asshole. Baby girl, just love me. This is all going to work out in the end. I kept telling her I didn't eat dinner twice. I didn't eat dinner twice. That wasn't a big deal when you have an ice cube in your butthole. She's 
Really hoping I would have. I can promise you that. <laughs> you may go one more. We good? Thank you guys so much for having me out here. I had a ton of fun. <laughs> Give it up for your host, Jacob. Fort Collins, you guys were great. <laughs> Derek Stroop, everybody. Thank you so much for showing up. Our next show is March 28th. If you like what you see, please donate generously. And thank you again for showing up. Have a great night. Thank you. <laughs>